Today, we are here with the mission to fix the world. I'm sorry. I'm a complete failure. I have no ideas on how to fix the world. I'm going to leave that to somebody more powerful and influential than me. I'll be honest. When I first heard the theme, I became defensive. And my buddies might argue, I got my Irish up. Right? Fixing meant something was broken. And okay, full disclosure, I'm totally blind and I'm losing my hearing. And I am not broken. Now, of course, there are issues and problems that need to be addressed and fixed. But I'm here to discuss people and how we perceive one another. Right? Because when it comes to that, our perception of each other is difficult. Like people can't be fixed because they're not broken. It is our perception and unwillingness to accept our own as well as others' challenges or assumed weaknesses that create the problem. I'm going to say that again. It is our perception and unwillingness to accept our own as well as others' challenges or assumed weaknesses that create the problem. Now, we have this shift in mindset where we accept people rather than trying to fix them. That's going to create greater happiness and harmony in this world. Okay, a little bit about myself. I am the youngest of five children. My mother, my oldest brother, were totally blind just like me. I had two other siblings who were legally blind from the outside, and we were definitely broken. Right? And there was so much pity for us, especially my dad. Aw, he, he must have been a saint. And how did he do it? Right? These are comments I'd often hear. And these same sentiments are directed toward my wife. Uh, probably not the blindness, it's you know, the fact that you pity them having to deal with me, and I'm kind of a jerk. I, I don't know. <laughs> but back to my family. They're actually quite normal and loving. Were we dysfunctional? Yes. But I'm going to save that for an audience of one while lying on the couch. Right? Being part of my family helped me adjust to my blindness. We never perceived ourselves as broken and we accepted it rather than trying to fight it. No one, and I mean no one in my family, was allowed to hold a pity party for themselves because we were all at the same dance. Were we different? Absolutely. But it was our acceptance and attitude that enabled us to thrive. I play sports, I teach, and I have a wonderful family. Blindness has not limited me. So I guess that's why I never saw blindness as a real challenge. It was my normal. Did I face issues? Well, yeah, I mean, look at the scars on my forehead. Looking, they tell a tale. I'm pretty banged up. Nevertheless, I was always comfortable with who I was, and I never felt broken. So I didn't start understanding the need to accept challenges until I started losing my hearing. About a dozen years ago, I was diagnosed with Meniere's disease. This comes with vertigo and progressive hearing loss. And for the first time in my life, I felt blind. Now, how do you explain that? Um, it's just that the skills and the strategies that had gotten me through to that point were no longer working as well. And you have to understand, I use hearing for everything. Orientation, mobility, communication, learning, playing sports. It was how I observed the world. Desperation, fear, sadness, and even panic became demons I had to wrestle with. Because how, how could I continue to teach? How could I continue to provide for my family? How could I continue enjoying life as I knew it? Well, that's when I realized 
that perseverance and acceptance were key. Initially, I had it all wrong. My focus was on the disease and how it was making me broken. And I wanted to fix it. Because as humans, we so want to be in control. We struggle with the concept that sometimes life just isn't fixable. It is. And in order for me to overcome my new challenge, I had to accept it. That yes, I was going deaf. But I was going to be okay. Blindness hadn't defined me. So why should hearing loss? So I'm confidently able to stand before you today and say, yes, I am totally blind. And yes, I am going deaf. But I am not broken. And neither are any of you who face challenges of your own. As a result of me accepting my new reality, I became comfortable with myself again. And honest with people. And I was no longer controlled by fear or saddened by loss. Instead, I was able to adapt again, which I always had, or ask for help. I'm going to let you in on a little secret as a person with a disability. People are wonderful. They want to help. You simply have to be open and strong enough to ask for it. As you age, which we all do, or you face an illness or disabling condition, I want you to recognize the fact that accepting and even embracing your change is the first step in overcoming it. Now, accepting your own challenges, that's difficult but sometimes not as difficult as accepting others. Shortly after my beautiful baby girl, Sarah, was born, my wife and I were informed that she had to have surgery. She had inherited glaucoma from me, and unless she had a procedure, she would go blind. I was rocked, devastated. Uh, poor girl, poor me, poor, the struggle, man. I had to dig deep, I, go into the darkness, and I came out realizing that I had to go back to the basics of perseverance and acceptance. My baby girl wasn't broken. She was beautiful. I would let the doctors work on fixing her vision, but she didn't need fixing. She was perfect. And why? Why couldn't she be happy and successful, even with a visual impairment? I was. What did I learn from this experience? Well, first off, I want to share with you that Sarah is doing really well. With the help of eye drops and contacts, we're able to go to the mall together. She spends all my money, <laughs> as good as should, right? And instead of me being a guide to her, she's become my guide, literally and figuratively. So what did I learn from this experience? I learned that I was a hypocrite, that if I was to profess not to be broken, and I encourage others to accept me, then I had to accept others and their challenges. Accepting yourself as unbroken is crucial, but accepting others as unbroken is just as important. Now, that doesn't mean everybody's going to accept you. What makes most people feel broken is the outside's perception of them. When I was a senior in college, I decided rather than going to law school, I was going to become a history teacher at a public school. 
Now, most people thought I was crazy, including my parents. I think the night I told them, the comment was, uh, Jim, uh, why don't you sleep it off and call us in the morning? But I wasn't under the influence. I wasn't crazy. I was serious. I wanted to become a teacher. Now, the student-teacher coordinator refused to place me in a public school. She felt that a school for the blind would be more appropriate. Well, I had to convince, all right, I had to threaten her, <laughs> that I had the right to fail, but more importantly, I had the right to follow my dreams. And I'm not an idiot. I understand people's doubt about my teaching abilities. A lot of it comes from fear or a stagnant perception of the student-teacher relationship. Most people feel that teachers have to be wardens who keep those darn kids in line. I argue, what about rapport and respect? Why can't a classroom be guided by those principles? 28 years later, these are still the ideas I'm promoting to young teachers who I mentor. And this isn't a blind thing. This is the human condition. Students want to be treated as individuals who don't want to be fixed. The first few years of my career, I remember getting students who are always labeled as broken. You know, they can't read, they can't learn, they can't listen, they can't thrive in an academic environment. And early in my career, I struggled. I asked, a lot, you know, I asked myself a lot of questions. Like, you know, aren't you a good teacher? Don't, don't, don't you care about them? And what's wrong with them? And, and what's wrong with me? Well, through experience and countless discussion, the answer was right in front of me. They weren't broken. It was our perception that needed to be altered. Right? The old adage, uh, you can't put a square peg in a round hole, right? That's referenced all too often. But schools and societies, they emphasize the squareness of the student peg. I argue the hole may be the problem. Each student that I've encountered has his or her own story. And any success, any success I've had as an, as an educator has come from me accepting them. Listen, when I walk into the classroom, I don't want to be perceived as broken or damaged goods, and neither do they. So with that understanding, we develop a relationship based on love and trust and mutual acceptance. And with that, we learn we grow together. And most importantly, I hope, I hope I'm able to teach them perseverance and the ability to accept themselves as well as others. Because if we're here to make a difference, if we're here to improve the world, I believe that mutual acceptance would be a great first step. So, as I promised earlier, I have no ideas on how to fix the world. I can't cure blindness or hearing loss. But what I can do, and what you can do, is stop trying to fix the world. More specifically, people. Individuals want to be accepted for who they are, not who they aren't or what they can be. Each person has his or her own, own struggles, and experiences who shape who they are. Think about the happiness and the joy that could come to this world. We spent a little less energy on trying to fix each other and a little more energy on accepting one another. It's actually quite simple. Don't fix what ain't broken. You're not broken. My students aren't broken. And I'm not broken. Thank you.